Hey gang, welcome, welcome to day three of the Course Creators Challenge. I've been caught on the hop this morning, so we don't have the fancy intro, we don't have any of that stuff going on, but you know what, it's okay, it's totally fine because we're just going to add so much freaking value today and give you uh, such um, some amazing insights that uh, it doesn't really matter. All the fancy pants stuff just doesn't really matter, right? What I do want to do before I bring on our special guest for today, who is amazing, by the way, and I'm super excited that uh, she's joining us. But before I do that, I just want to give a huge shout out to some people. First of all, I want to make sure we're actually live. And then I want to give a huge shout out to some people who are just blowing my mind with how much action they're taking and the fact that, here we go, we are live, that... um. I just want to rattle off some people here who are having some huge wins. Angie Neal has actually sold her first course. It's ridiculous. She posted it in the Facebook group yesterday, right? She sold her first. Uh, she's got a SEO rock stars course. She's selling for $100 and she sold one already. Just like, there we go. The Facebook counter is going up as people like uh, the um, – uh, what's going on? Angie says, uh, uh, I love this system. I'm getting such clarity on exactly what people want and need from my course. Boom. That is the whole point of what it is we're doing here, Angie. So you are an absolute rock star. Jay Sant has got three people interested uh, in his uh, graphic design course, teaching people how to become a graphic designer without investing four years in college or expensive art schools. Tina Hughes. Where is my friend Tina Hughes? <laughs> this is ridiculous. Tina Hughes, who I believe is are you in are you in Australia, Tina? You're in Brisbane, that's right. You and Angie are both in Brisbane. There's something going on up in Queensland. Tina says, Troy, you fabulous little possum. This technique works a treat for course validation. Uh, and then she shares a screenshot where she's had over 41 people opt in. Right? She set up a Google form and sent an email to her arty farty uh, mailing list in her words, right? I used a Google form and sent an email to my arty farty mailing list and she's had 41 people say, yes, I'm in. I mean, it's this is ridiculous in like less than 24 hours, right? Crazy, crazy, crazy. So a uh, huge shout out to people uh, having these uh, successes and getting results. It just proves if you take action, and follow the process, uh, sometimes it works. Chris Sweeney says, no sound. Really? Can you guys hear me okay? Dana, can you hear me? If you're in the green room, can you nod? You, yep, Dana can hear me. Uh, Chris, plug in your speakers or put your headphones in. There's definitely sound coming through here. Um, Angie says, we have a few more nearly converted. Look at that. We have a few more nearly converted. That's fantastic. All right, a little bit of housekeeping before I bring in my good friend, uh, who I'm so, I'm so excited to be hanging out again and doing this. I just love this so much. A uh, little bit of housekeeping. Give StreamYard permission for me to bring your name and your, uh, your, your picture up on the stream here. Give StreamYard permission. Uh, because, you know, people in their privacy, uh, you need to give me explicit permission to do that. And also, if you are watching this in the Digital Mavericks Facebook group and you don't have the workbook yet, you do actually need to get on over to our Facebook page, which is facebook.com slash WP Elevation. Find the live stream over there and leave a comment with the word workbook in the comments and we will automatically send you our beautiful Canva workbook template via the wonders of Facebook Messenger, okay? Cool. Jennifer Paganessi is here and says, I can hear you. Excellent. Very good. All right. Well, without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to bring up on the stage here my good friend all the way from sunny Southern California. Of course, it is the lovely Dana Malta. Dana! Hey! How's it going? going? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. You make me sitting on the couch in the living room look really boring compared to your background. I need some. Well, I was just gonna going to say you, you've got like a crane and a microphone there that makes me feel inferior because you've got this 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 well, like huge. What what is that thing? No, is this is this is literally. Well, it's the cord that's just wrapped up, but because uh -huh. of the way like the video looks, um, 
and my head is small just to begin with. So do it doesn't take yeah. much. <laughs> but here's the thing. They finally opened movie theaters here in San Diego. And so oh. I'm actually at a friend's house because I'm after this, I'm going to go to a movie. Y'all, I'm going it. to sit in a what? theater and I'm going to watch a movie and I'm going to eat popcorn and I'm going to have a Diet Coke. Okay, wait, Matt, wow. that's the size of the popcorn. This is the size of the Diet Coke. And it's going right. to be amazing. It's going to wow. be amazing. I'm very excited. Are you, are you, you going with a friend? <laughs> I am. I am. I have those. You have You have to wear a mask in. They take your temperature to go in. And then, but then once you sit down, you don't have to wear a mask because they have wow. everybody space that like once you buy two tickets, it automatically blocks out the seats around you. And huh. so, it, yeah. Got it. Yeah. Um, how are you? I'm good. I'm good. It's my afternoon. I have my oh so girly white claw, um, hard mm. <laughs> seltzer <laughs> hanging out. Um, and Thursday, Tuesday's a Tuesday. This week, Tuesday is my deep thought content day. So you're really yeah. the only, I had one interview this morning and then the, this whole day, I block out one day a week for me to deep think and deep dive into reviewing content, writing content. Sometimes I just read. Sometimes I go and go for long walks and really think about what's working, not working. Sometimes I meditate. Sometimes I like I do what I need to do to get into the zone of what needs to happen with what we're building and what we're doing to keep moving forward. And I find that that one day a week is one of the most valuable days I have, and I get such clarity, such calm. I feel in control again in my business. And I say, it helps me say no to a lot of things um, mm. because I know what's serving me. So I've been really, I, I started doing it about in like April or so, um, right after all the lockdowns. And I, I was reading the book Essentialism and I just decided, mm. you know what, I'm gonna try doing blocking out a whole day. So today was wow. my day. So you're really getting wow. as calm, Dana, as you can possibly get. Awesome. Thank you. I really appreciate you doing this, by the way. And I'm super jealous that you have a full day to do deep thought. And I have essentialism on the top of my Kindle list to read based on your mm -hmm. recommendation. Well, if you I had a full day, you would have time to I, read it. I tell I you, Troy, you have time. You could make a full day. Know. You know, you know. just, totally. it's a, uh, oh, that's, a, that's the thing. We've got all the things. It's hard not to do all the things. How do you resist like just diving in and doing stuff on your day that you have set aside because here's the thing right if i put aside a full day i'm just being completely transparent and vulnerable here if i put mm -hmm. aside a full day to do deep thought i would feel like i would feel guilty and i would feel completely self-indulgent like what are you doing you idiot just like going for a walk <laughs> and doing deep thought your people need you get in and do some work that's my own shit but how do you resist the temptation to not actually jump in and do stuff on that day yeah. Well, there's, okay. So there's, there's a lot of things. So number one, if everybody that was watching just thought about the number of things that you say you're going to do on your list, but you don't get to that day anyway, right? It always gets pushed off. There's always too many things to do. So the first thing when I wake up on these, on this day of the week is I, I, think about, okay, all of the things I'm sure I, I, I believe have to happen today, right? Those fires, those, but whatever it is. And I just go, what's the worst thing that happens if it doesn't get done tomorrow is if is there something that i actually need to message a team member or handle this morning that but but it's never yes it's never yes something can always wait a day so that that feeling right that and if there is something that is like oh my gosh i've got this email that was supposed to get written a week ago then part of my deep thinking is how do i make sure the next time i have a launch or the next time i'm building that thing or the next time i do affiliate thing i'm not behind I'm not, I'm not losing time. I'm not whatever it is that you're feeling. So I generally take whatever feels like it should be a fire or should be getting done. And one of the first things I deep thought is how can I make sure next time that doesn't happen that way? How do I make sure next time? And then that gets me into deep thought of like, okay, instead of fixing this problem that I'm probably gonna have to fix over and over and over and over again, mm -hmm. do I want more one-on-one -on -one clients where I keep having to do this kind of work that keeps me away from this? You know, mm -hmm. is there a system we could create that's better? Is there somebody mm -hmm. else besides me that could be doing it? And I, and mm -hmm. once I ask myself those questions, then I can get into the mode of it is more valuable for me to create efficiencies and to, in my business, Business and for me to delegate in my business and for me to be the go west forward thinker in my business because it may feel like I'm not getting that one thing done today, but mm. next month I'm going to have more time. And I've been doing it since April and all of a sudden now I have time. I didn't wake up this morning and feel like I was missing something or supposed to do something because I've, I've 
been able to have one day a week to go, how do I fix stuff? How do I make yeah. my business better? How do I get rid of ring out waste and make mm. people in my team do things that are more aligned with their area of expertise? Or do we need more resources? Or is that thing actually converting? Should I stop spending money on that ad? What are mm. those things that I... If for a long time, you just get so busy, you don't get to ask yourself those questions. And for everybody right now that's building a course, you're going to get to a time when you haven't, you're done with building the course and you're out mm -hmm. selling the course, right? Mm -hmm. But you're going to have to figure out what are the one or two things that's not just going to help me sell one course today. It's going to help me sell a sell hundred courses tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And you're going to have to start doing those deep dives to figure out and test out different strategies to find the thing that works for you. And if you don't create the time to do it, then what you inevitably do is you say, well, I'm done with this. I'll create something new. And I know people that have been able to stop themselves from creating something new and have been able to make millions on the one thing mm -hmm. or dive deeper. Or like me, I turned our bigger course, broke it down and turned it to a membership site. And it serves me in such a better way in my business and what we're trying to build here at Boss Mom because I'm, I'm able to create space to really understand what it is I am trying to build and what I should be focusing on and helping myself mm -hmm. say no to the things that aren't going to get me there. Yeah. So uh, just a quick reminder, this is calm, Dana, that we have today. And I just, this is like, I just love your positivity and your energy <laughs> and your exuberance. And this is calm, Dana. This is like, this is the calmest we get. So this uh, is me slow talking too. Normally I'm I way faster than this. So I want to, I just want to take a step back in time to the first, first of all, I want to take a step back in time to the moment where you decided that you were going to produce an online course or an online training of some sort. Like when did that click in your head? Yeah. So back in corporate, back in the day when I was a youngster, um, mm. I used to actually create online content, voiceovers with slides for different companies and their wellness programs, their employee engagement programs. I basically kind of went in and helped create better engaged, better retention for their employees kind of thing for, for growing companies. And so when I started my own business, um, I, I discovered Udemy. And so mm -hmm. I went on Udemy and I was like, wow, what do I, what am I doing? I'm making, and I was at the time very interested in infographics and mm -hmm. there was a online tool that made infographics, right? Mm -hmm. And like, you, like a Canva version, right? It was kind of yeah. like a Canva before Canva. I don't know, I'm not even sure Canva existed. Maybe this makes me really old. Um, I'm not sure. <laughs> but so I went in and I actually created a course on how to make infographics, how to turn an idea or content or something you want to teach into an infographic. And I put it on Udemy and it, you know, and then I, I didn't really even tell many people about it. I don't, I didn't even, you know, I didn't really utilize mark online marketing at uh, the way I do now. But people started to like it. And because people, because it must have been something, and I'll be perfectly honest, I didn't research SEO. I didn't think about what people, I just thought, what's a skill I have where I could show somebody how to do something and then I'll put it up. It just happened to work. And people started doing, and the, the company that actually, um, had the tool reached out to me and said, we love your training. Why don't you come on and do a webinar with us and we'll tell people about it. And I was like, great. I felt like a superstar. And so went on and did webinars with them. And at this point I wasn't really selling anything else. So it just helped me sell more of that course on, on Udemy. And I, you know, I made like $500 a month or something off of Udemy. And then Skillshare, who's another uh, tool that basically is a subscription base where you can learn courses, reached out and said, we want to put your course on our, on our site. Would you come over and we'll pay you? We don't have an exclusivity thing. And I went mm -hmm. over and I loved it. I actually really liked that way more than Udemy. So I took my, mm -hmm. eventually took my course off of Udemy and Skillshare. And then I started just doing more. I started making 30 minute, an hour long uh, ones on social media, ones on content strategy strategy. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden I was making like two grand a month with not my own platform, not my own anything, um, just over there. And that's before boss mom was ever even born. I was making money wow. off of third party platforms, posting small courses. And when, and then, so when the time came and I, I wrote the boss mom book and realized boss mom was going to be the brand, I already knew 
courses were going to be amazing. So I just started selling those courses. And then I made a lot of, I made six figures in eight months in Boss Mom by just making small under $97 courses and doing systematic flash sales within our Facebook group and to my small email list. And we would close 10K in a day um, over a period of time. Like I'd have one on my birthday and I just, I'd go out and have fun or, you know, for the day and I'd close 10K because we have a series of set emails we sent out, a series of set posts we sent out. And we just, we just oiled the flash sale machine and we got really, really good at it. And it wasn't until two year, year and a half or so, almost two years in that I then translated everything I'd been doing with my group program and my coaching um, into raising your business course and was a thousand dollar course. And then we started systematically selling that. But yeah, we st- I started small and I made really wow. good money doing it. Wow. Okay. There is like so much to unpack here. I hope everyone watching is like cancel the rest of their day because there's, and I know (laughs) you've got a movie to go to, so I've got to get through this. There is so much to unpack here. But I think one of the key things to highlight here is you were in a situation. So so talk to us about the Facebook group because you were kind of, even though you were selling like under $97 courses, they were like super short about how to solve a very specific thing and they were Mm -hmm. hyper-focused. You were playing the volume game, right? Because you had an audience that you could put those courses in front of. So talk to me about, because I I know a lot of people, the biggest mistake I see people make, and I've been through this myself, uh, the first course we made, I I did exactly this and because I didn't know what I was doing. And I see so many people getting stuck, which is why we're doing this challenge and why we're opening up our new training next week or Friday we open up, is People go build a course, they don't have an audience, they spend weeks or months making this amazing, beautiful course, they put it up online, they try to sell it, and they sell like three copies of a $500 Mm -hmm. course. They're like, well, holy shit, I just spent three months pouring my heart and soul into this. You already had an audience through your Boss Mom Facebook group, right? Not not really. Um, I mean, we were starting the flash sales when I had like less than 500 people in the group. I mean, it was not not substantial. When I first launched my – uh, basically my, my academy, which is my six month group coaching program, which in itself is a course, right? Everybody mm-hmm. like, like it's this, it's a similar amount of content. It's a program you offer. Um, it has a way for them to pay for it. Yes. It's, it's a different kind of offering, but it, re- it involves me being able to say on a sales page that I'm going to get you from point A to point B. It's not much different mm-hmm. than a course, except for one I do live and one's recorded. Um, I had 500 people on my list when we launched it and closed $28,000. Um, you know, it, for, off of 500 people, like it doesn't, if you can convert, cause you can nurture them in the right way and you have the right people, you mm. don't have to have a million people. Right. Um, I think we had, I want to say with my raising your business course, we were probably up to more like a couple thousand in the, in the email list, maybe three or 4,000. Um, I don't know. I don't remember exactly, but that was a thousand dollar course. We did our first, um, like seven day launch with just to the email list and we closed 36,000. So yeah, you don't, you don't have to have crazy. And, and in the Facebook group, the thing is, is that if, if for us, you just have to know your market, like our moms, we have discovered if it's under a hundred dollars, they don't have to ask their husband. It's just, yeah, yeah. uh, you just, you yeah. can, for most audiences, you can spend a hundred bucks. It's not something yeah. you got to discuss, you know, that's yeah. not true for everybody, but you know, for a lot of people. So what we did is we're like in it from a sales background, I don't want more than more people in the buying decision process than I need. I want the buyer, the person who makes the, the key decision maker to be the one looking at my page, making the decision. I don't need yeah. anybody else convincing them that this is a bad idea. Yeah. I want, so for us un, under a hundred dollars was a very strategic way to do it. Yeah. So it was, it wasn't even, just about numbers, it was I need to be able to make it quick because I can't make a big course until I really understand what true problem I'm solving. Like mm. I made small courses because I like doing a lot of things and I, mm-hmm. I can do a lot of things, but I mm-hmm. wasn't quite sure exactly what my thing was going to be. Um, mm. And therefore the small courses, I got to make money while I was doing market research. And some of our stuff didn't sell all that great. Uh, and some of our stuff sold like gangbusters and the things that sold like gangbusters, we put into a shop and then we turned them to evergreen and sold them all the time. Time, um, and then we just have bigger sales on them. And then the other ones, we just, you know, slowly hoped everybody would forget that we tried that and it didn't work. <laughs> Retired them into the top paddock. Yeah. Talk to me about a talk to me about a, a $97 course. What would how like how much content would be in that? Because I know a lot of people watching this right now are like, okay, I'm gonna sell a course. I can sell a course for a hundred bucks because that's just like a mental barrier that I've got, and I'm happy to sell it for less than a hundred bucks. How much do you have to deliver for a $97 course to be valuable to someone? 
Yeah. Um, I think the the standard I would say is if it's under 47, an hour to 90 minutes of content is great. It can be less. We've if if the workbook or something like our, our buzz plan we've sold at, you know, really cheap, um, all the way up to $27. And that that was a workbook and a 15 minute training. But the workbook brainstorming, it, I mean, it gives we knew it was just juicy with results. So that one was easy. Um, our Facebook group course is we is 97, but we in our in the funnel, we sell it for 47. Um, and I would say that's, uh, you know, for 97 products, I would say somewhere between two and three hours. Um, wow. There's totally people that have many little tiny offers um, that jam pack it with six or seven hours of content. It's crazy. It's out there. I don't think that's necessary. I, yeah. I would say less is more. Like, get, like mm-hmm. don't throw so much content at people that they will two things. One, that they're overwhelmed by everything. Right. And two, that they think by watching your content, that was is in itself success, because then what you get is you get a bunch of people that liked the content, but don't ever end up getting results. And then you don't end up getting great testimonials about how it worked because Mm -hmm. they spent all their time watching your content and didn't have time to implement your content. So I'd say only make it as long as it needs to. Ninety seven dollars three hours or less, $47, 90 minutes or less. Um, mm-hmm. Usually I would say you try to cover as many um, senses as you can. So even if it's just a workbook, uh, you pull up the workbook as a PDF and do a video of you walking through it with them um, so that they can see your face, they can hear your voice, um, then they can download the workbook, like all as many senses as you can get. Because the whole goal of anything small is to get them going, what's next? Dana, what's next? What can you give me now? Everything you have, I want. I want to hear your voice. I want you to be in my life. I want to know you. If you didn't know that we were best friends, we are, um, you know, like those kinds of things. That's what you want. So, so get them with all the senses. Um, Don't give them more than they need and don't apologize for it. Don't, I mean, the biggest thing people do is they jam pack bonuses. They jam pack things because they just say, and, and by the way, if you see an ad, and it's got a, pro- a, pro- a tiny product, right? Because I know like mm-hmm. tiny offers, your pocket offers, the whatever marketing term people want to use for something that has existed for a long time, which is something that's just not that expensive, <laughs> it's, mm-hmm. right? And you go and, and then you see it. And then the sales page is like a thousand miles long, right? And, it, and it's got a million hours of stuff. Well, the reason they do that is because they are hardcore spending hundreds of thousands of dollars on ads to a cold audience. They have to make it that way because the people buying have no idea who they are and and have to be convinced, right? Just so you know, I have spent way less time um, basically just have a nurturing in a really authentic, good way, um, getting, helping people to get to know me. Like I think our Facebook group is great because I don't have to spend that much time there in order to create this nice ecosystem. And I have a video sales letter, a few bullet points and a button and those suckers convert I mean, mm-hmm. they convert. And especially if I have like an easy opt-in and then my, my we call it our easy yes page, which is basically like selling them something that's really like a templates or scripts or, you know, something that makes their life easier. And those can generally, we can get those to convert 25% um, as a, you know, on a thank you page. And mm-hmm. it just works amazing. And we don't have to have a million things on the page because mm-hmm. you're, because it's, you know, it's not necessarily the cold traffic. Now, if you want something to go to straight up cold traffic, you're going to have to add more. You're going to have to spend more time convincing people that it's valuable. Yeah. So I'd say I, start start with people you know. 100%. I've had people hit our sales pages for courses and email me, like buy the thing and email me and said, I didn't even watch the sales video. I just scrolled all the way to the bottom and clicked the buy button and went through the checkout. I didn't even mm-hmm. read the sales page because I knew I wanted it before I even got there. The other thing I'll say is that if you see a tiny offer, I've done this before. I, I used to be... I used to, you know, follow these ad trails and before I was kind of funnel savvy, I'd follow these ad trails and I'd I'd go, oh my God, they're giving, how do they do that for like $47? That's crazy. They're giving all that away for $47. I'm totally buying that. And then you realize on the thank you page, there's an upsell for $97. And then on the next thank you page, there's an upsell for $397. And before you know it, you've spent 600 bucks. It's like, whoa, holy shit, what just happened then? I just spent $600. on. Yeah, someone. it's like a guy who just tells you he wants to cuddle. Yeah. <laughs> 
But we both know that's oh, God, not God. what oh, he's looking for. God, and then God. how many God. women wake up the next day from the guy that just wants to cuddle and yeah. feel good about <laughs> your decisions that evening? <laughs> you know, that's exactly. why I'm, funnels work, man. They, I tell you, you could, you could five down, you know, down. Thank you page yeah. after thank you page after thank you page. It works. Yeah. I, I yeah. don't think, I think there's a lot more buyer's remorse. I think more than, I think a thank you page, maybe more. I usually do like a bump and an upsell. Yep. You know what I mean? Like that, like you check yep. out, like our Facebook group course is $47. We have our $47 Nurture to Convert Society membership, right? So on the thank you page or on the checkout page for the Facebook group course, mm -hmm. we have a bump that says, would you like to get the Nurture to Convert Society for free? Right. Because it's a $47 membership. You get the Facebook group course in there anyway. So it doesn't cost me any more to offer it. 52% um, of the people that buy the Facebook group course say yes. Right. And we, we started the ads for that, I think, three or four months ago. And as of right now, I think it's somewhere in the 80% range of the amount of people that have stayed those four months. So wow. my ads that are costing me about cost neutral, it's costing me about $47 to get to sell $47. But 52% mm -hmm. of those people are saying yes to a membership and then paying me $47 a month wow. for the next consecutive three to four months. Mm -hmm. That is a scalable model. That's, That's just totally a scalable yeah, model. Yeah. yeah. And so, so, and then on the thank you page for us, we used to have more on the thank you page for us. We don't necessarily, cause our membership is the place we want. So on the thank you page, if they say yes to the membership, then on the thank mm -hmm. you pages, offers them the annual pass for 50% off at this one time. Mm. And we usually get four to five percent of people saying yes to that. And that's an extra $282 that we get up front because we know on average in a membership, people are going to stay somewhere between six months. So we might as well get that money up front. Right. But yeah. It, yeah, yeah, but other than that, we don't keep going and going and going. You just have to like you have to know how much your audience wants and and not push it, right? Like mm. Like go at your audience's pace, push them a little bit, but also recognize they're human beings mm -hmm. like that want to wake up the next morning and not mm -hmm. regret what they have done with you. <laughs> yeah, 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 totally. Um, wow, there's so much to unpack here. Before I, before we dive in and before I start taking some questions, I just want to get a bit of an idea. Like how fast forward now, how many years it's been you do, you doing what you do. You've built an incredible brand. You've written books. You've got this amazing community membership. You've got this great business. What does your week look like? I just want to paint a bit of a picture for people as to like what a week looks like for someone who is in this space, running a successful business as a, essentially a content creator, whether it's courses or membership, whatever it is, what is it? What does a, a usual week look like for Dana? Yeah. Yeah. And I saw somebody say, I don't think I could do a, like a deep thought day. Right. And I, I totally, totally get that. When I had infants, my deep thought day meant feeding my children <laughs> and taking it, being a mom. Right. And I worked a lot of nights in the beginning. So, um, wherever you're at, you know, you just, you, you deal with that. I've, I've, we've had boss mom for six years. I've been, had my own business for eight. And so I like to, uh, I I've discovered, I remember when I first started, I would, the, and I think a lot of women do this. We go, I'm a multitasker. Women are multitaskers. Right. So that means I could do, I could flip from this to that and I can just do all these things. And, and I would say, I'm an extrovert. I, like having conversations. So I like to pepper my day with conversations. Then in between, I'll get these things done. Um, and I was just lying to myself in all <laughs> sorts of ways. And what I discovered is, yeah, I'm an, in, I'm an extrovert, but my brain goes, is, is ignited and, 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 and excited about things easily. And because of that, you and I have a conversation and then I'm like, well, shoot, now I want to just think about what Troy and I were talking about. I don't want to think about my stuff, right? Or, oh, this problem that somebody has, or, oh, this made me think of a book I should write. And so I stopped trying to do all sorts of things in different days and I started theming my days. So first big thing I did that was a huge change for me that I recommend everybody do which is I stopped taking meetings that weren't team meetings on Mondays uh, because my Sundays would get screwed up because I would either get a ton, have to work on Sunday, realizing that Monday was booked with calls and things mm -hmm. needed to get done. Or I would, um, I would not get things done on Sunday and then Monday was super stressful. And now I've started my whole week by feeling behind and that just sucks. Right. Mm -hmm. So I, I, several years ago, I stopped taking calls on, on Monday and I stopped taking calls after like 10 AM on Friday. And that became mm -hmm. either my start the weekend early, or for me, it became go find somebody to have lunch with and network with, like find somebody you should be hanging out with. Mm -hmm. um, and we have a lot of those in San Diego. So Mondays mm -hmm. are now just my team meeting day. Mm -hmm. and my planning day. 
They are my, what do I need to make sure it gets done? If we have to be writing emails, I take a look at what has to be written and I plan them out in the week. I, you know, strategically planning effort because I have my um, operations uh, call to go, okay, we just talked about what the priorities are. Does everybody on my team have what they need? Do we need any more resources? So it's really business building components, right? Do I hire anybody, delegate to anybody? Do I need to review any content for my team? Anything like that. Um, and then Tuesdays and Thursdays, because I co-parent, um, they flip. So actually days that I have kids are content creation days, Tuesday or Thursday. And then days that I don't have kids are my deep thought days. So like I don't have my kids today. So mm -hmm. it's a deep thought day um, mm -hmm. because that way I don't have to pick them up at four and I can just, it, it allows me more space, which if you, obviously, if you're still married, hopefully all of you are. <laughs> Um, then, then that may not be enough. But for me, I flip those days. So it's one day a week is a content day, but mm -hmm. Tuesdays and Thursdays, no matter what, I pretty much, unless it's something I consciously decide like this, I don't mm -hmm. take calls. Like I don't mm -hmm. do, I don't do calls as, as much as humanly possible because I need to be in my business. Wednesdays are client call days and it is jam packed. My mm -hmm. Wednesdays are from like 8.30 to 3, call, 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 call. But after 3, I know to not do anything. I'm not going to pick up my phone. I'm not going to do content. I'm dead to the world. I'm just going to watch cartoons with my kids or veg <laughs> out, right? And I just know it, but that's great because I get all of that jam packed in of all of those calls and I'm in client mode. And mm -hmm. then Friday, I usually have, have like spillover. Friday is my, what did I think I was going to get done? But, you know, life happened and I didn't. And then that way on Friday, Maybe I had to move a client call. Maybe an interview needed to happen. Maybe I needed to finish creating something and I create that space for mm -hmm. myself. And that's, and, and let's be perfectly honest. Sometimes that schedule does not work at all. Mm -hmm. so, you know, sometimes the, the, I feel like it should, but it doesn't. And that's so, like this, this Thursday, my son has to go to the dentist and then my kids both have to go to the doctor to get mask exemptions because they start school next week and they both have really bad asthma. So mm -hmm. my Thursday is going to be, you know, my content day is basically going to be me trying to write like two emails in the midst of, you know, my kids being there. But the great part is, is on Monday when I sat down to plan, one of the questions I asked myself is what's going to get in the way of me getting things done this week? and being productive in a way I want to be. And I looked at Thursday and went, okay, Dana, there's no way you're writing more than two emails the entire day of Thursday. It's just not going to happen. And so I gave myself that grace and space to go, then what are the two most important emails you need to write? And then I'm able to end the week going, you did pretty good. You know, we'll, we'll work on things and figure things out that we could do better on Monday, but otherwise you're not doing too bad. Wow. Um, there's a lot, there's so much to learn there and I definitely have to get better at theming my days because I'm, I, I mean, I kind of do, but I'm still, I still find myself kind of in the thing, in the weeds too much, you know? Um, oh, can I, yeah. can I give you, wait, before you go on, can I give yeah, you a thing please. that I've started doing? Because I, yeah. I honestly, I a hundred percent get you. And when I started to try to do theme days or just do anything new and then it wouldn't happen, um, I, I, t I, I get it. Like it's a hundred percent. So, I have a theory, right, about habits, which is mm -hmm. the first part of a habit. Like, say, like I, I downloaded this habit app, right, and I want to have better habits about content days and, and and what I'm doing during the day and what means what productivity and meditation and things or whatever you want to do. And I, so I downloaded this habit app. But what I realized, just like people who who try and use Trello and then they tell me it just didn't work for me, I'm like, well, you never open the app. Like, <laughs> the first habit you have to build is to open the app to open mm -hmm. the website, to look at the thing. So that's mm -hmm. why my Mondays became, okay, I'm not gonna, I don't care about what happens this week. The only thing I have to do is I, we use ClickUp now, but I have to open ClickUp and I just have mm -hmm. to spend 10 minutes there. And immediately it ignites my my going, oh, we need to do this and this and this. And then all of a sudden my brain goes, okay, we need to do all these things. And then and then I'm able to start the process for my habits. Um, I, I, now I have the Habit app and I actually created a, um, I created a, a on here. I'll show you on my um, thing. It says open the app and it has mm -hmm. an arrow up to the thing. And every time I stop recognizing that I change it to look different and it wow. just created the habit that every day I open that app. And now I do a one minute plank and I only do, it has to be less than 10 minutes. So I do a one minute plank every single day. Right. I, um, I take my vitamins. I do. I'm one of those like dorky girls that wears a retainer at night. So, <laughs> cause I have the TMJ. So I like put my retainer in at night. And there's just these simple things that I do that are under 10 minutes. And I, and, but I have to open the app. 
like I can't start those habits. So if you're trying to figure out your theme days or trying to write, make, you're talking about, I'm going to make a course. And then you're like, where did that week go? Right. Then what, then I, a client of mine, I said that open up the outline. That's all you have to do. The only habit you have to build right mm -hmm. now is opening up the, the, the outline, open up your calendar, open mm -hmm. up that thing that's yep. going to help prompt you to go, this is a priority. I should do it. And, yeah. and, and that, and that, so it's just like, stop thinking that doing the thing is the habit thinking yeah. about go into the, what's the habit that helps me think and prioritize the thing. And that's the first habit you build. My, my wife and I realized this about exercise. The way to do exercise is to put your exercise clothes on yes. because you don't put your exercise clothes on and then just walk around the house or make lunch. Like you put your exercise gear on. It's like, well, I've, I've got my runners on and I've got my exercise gear on. I'm, I guess I'm going for a run. But thinking about going for a run, there's all this stuff that gets in the way. Whereas if you just put your runners on, then that's the start of the, the process. Yeah, and um, totally know how you work because I could put workout clothes on. And then I've I've been known to sit and eat popcorn while watching P90X. <laughs> so that that doesn't – but the one-minute plank for me – here's the funny part. What I wanted to do was eat a little healthier because COVID had gotten me not eating very – I was snacking too much. Mm -hmm. The one-minute plank wasn't to get me more – uh, to, to, I don't need to lose weight, right? I'm mm -hmm. I don't, I don't have a lot going on a anyway. Mm -hmm. Like I, so what I wanted it to do was help me eat healthier. And by doing the one minute plank and becoming stronger, all of a sudden I go, you know, do I really need that glass of wine? Like, do I really need those chips? You know, because it, what it did is it just prompted my brain to go, oh, we're doing healthy things. And, and I think that works for anything. So, so if you're trying to make your course, you know, maybe what you need to do, it, just like I tell, like writing a book, like maybe what you need to do is go make the cover of your course. You know, maybe you just need to record an audio for yourself that you listen to every day talking about that's a you being really excited about teaching the thing. And mm. you have to listen to it as a meditation every morning to get you realizing the things you really want in life. And sometimes the thing for me eating healthy, the habit wasn't the eating healthy. I needed to do something else that I knew would motivate me. And that just is a trial and error. I've tried a bunch of things that didn't work, by the way. The plank for me just happens to work. And now I can do a two minute and 10 second plank. Wow, that's impressive. I'm struggling to do 40 seconds at the moment. Um, uh, hey, questions, questions. I know we've, we've only got a limited amount of time left. I'm keen to uh, get any questions answered. If you have a question, uh, let us know in the comments here and I'll bring it up. One thing I do want to talk about is you just to be clear, with the client work that you do, you don't do any implementation, do you? You're basically doing like strategy consulting and coaching, right? I am, but I do a ton of content review. I do a ton of content review. Oh. I'm constantly viewing sales pages, telling people what's wrong, <laughs> watching videos, reading emails. Um, so I do a ton of content review. I don't fix the content, but I do a lot of looms, which is one of my favorite Ooh. tools, uh, yeah. which basically just screen shares it. And then it gives me a link immediately. So no exporting, mm -hmm. no nothing. Mm -hmm. And I go in and then I share those and say, this is what you fix. This is what's wrong. And because this is the other thing I tell people about your content, since we're all, all creating content here, is do not get married to your content because there's going to be stuff that don't work and be brutally honest with yourself and each other about whether or not it's actually something that people will buy. So, you know, teaching them to validate your ideas is, is amazing because you don't want to have something where you feel like, oh my gosh, people just don't, you know, I, I, I'm going to keep trying and keep trying, keep trying. And maybe it's me. No, it's not you. Your identity is not linked to the content you create. You know, you can create new things all the time. Don't be married to it. Don't fall in love with it. Don't make names of things that are overly clever, right? Because they never work. Stephen King says, kill your darlings. Anything you think is outlandishly witty, don't name it that. Just, <laughs> you know? And, and so, like, you want to get into this habit of going, of testing. You want it, like I said, like, we made small stuff all the time because it was like, make it small, make it fast, test it. If it works, make it, m scale it or make it bigger, yeah. right? But it's like, so yeah. for everybody here, like, if you're making something right now and it works, amazing. Find ways to market it better, to get it out there, to, you know, affiliate with other people or to make it a bigger program right? And upsell things or make it into a group program. If it's, um, if it's not working, then assess whether or not it's just the con like, usually if something's not working, it's because you have, have not named it well, or your, you know, title, your, um, you know, tagline, is not right? You're not like, there's four things. The, the one thing I'll say is for four things that everybody here has to know about how people make buying decisions. One, you have to agree that you're solving the same problem which most people do not do a good job of. If you're looking at your guys' sales page, your opt-in page, your whatever, and you're going, is everybody really clear on what problem we're solving? 
right? And I'm, I'm trying to think of a good example of, of the problem you're solving. Because I remember I've seen, uh, I just, just looking at a page and someone was, it was talking, oh yeah, I was uh, a girl who's got this great subscription box for teaching your kids art and my kids actually have it. And her and I got in a call and she said, you know, um, you know, I really want to help people. Like we're going to, the problem I'm solving is for kids to be more confident. And I said, that's not the problem parents give a crap about solving. We say, of course we want confident kids, but let's be honest. We're not out there going, my kid could, I'm willing to spend some money to make my kid more confident if it's not a massive issue. And you're not targeting kids with high anxiety. You're just targeting kids knowing that learning art and music and those things makes them more confident. The problem you're trying to solve, I told her that in my mind, is that schools are, are don't have time right now to focus on art, right? Which means, and then you can start throwing out the problem of how, if I want an educated, cultivated child where art is important in their lives, I'm solving the problem of school no longer teaches that. So how do I, since I don't know how to do art, solve that problem. Like that's a solvable problem. So you have to agree that you're solving the problem and make sure that what you think you're saying isn't just some soft problem. It's like the real, the like, mm -hmm. I can't put my, my pant, my favorite pants on because I've gained too much mm -hmm. weight problem. Right. That's the, that's the problem. So you got to agree that you're solving the same problem. Number two, you have to agree that solving the problem right now is a priority. Again, something people don't do. Now you can do that with a timer. You can do it with a countdown. You can do it with scarcity, but I say you have to really do it by telling them why waiting makes them dumb, right? Just, I mean, just bluntly, like they have to look at it and go, oh my gosh, if I don't get this and do this now, my life is going to be worse. My family's going to be worse, whatever mm -hmm. it is. It has to be, why do you have to do it today? Why, if, if I wait, what happens? You have to mm -hmm. really set that tone. Number three, they have to agree that you can solve the problem, right? Mm -hmm. So you got to build some authority and clout, which is what you should be doing out. You and me talking makes people go, oh, Dana knows what she's talking about. I'm building authority in knowing what the heck I'm talking about and whatever the particular topic is that you want to talk about. And the last one is that you can actually get them the result. And to me, that's where all the testimonials come in, right? right. And if you don't have testimonials and you be really crystal clear on what the end point is, so you can't be vague about it makes you happier and it's a better life. I know that's what we all want to say. It's live the life you love and be who you want to be. Those just aren't where people make buying decisions because half of us don't even believe we can be that person anyway or don't know who that person is that we want to be, right? Or that we should be allowed to be it because we've got other priorities. So you got to be specific about what the result is. And then if you have testimonials, you should absolutely totally put those in and constantly be asking the people that are joining your program for testimonials all along the way so that you have that evidence. If you can do those four things, agree on the problem, sorry, agree on the problem, um, agree on that the problem is a priority to solve right now, agree you're the one to solve the problem and agree that you can get them the result that they, that you and them both want them to get, uh, then, then you can sell anything. Then you're done, 100%. Uh, a couple of questions here from Kelvin. Uh, great tip so far. Thank you. How did you build your Facebook group audience to the 500 stage and beyond? Oh, this is actually what I talk about. This is actually the topic everybody <laughs> – <laughs> brings me on to talk about is uh, community and Facebook groups. Um, okay, so there the way that we built our group uh, is a couple things. Number one, um, we don't train a lot in the group. The group is about giving people permission. So number one, if you want to grow a group, you have to give them permission to tell them they belong. Like Seth Godin says, people like us do things like this, right? That's that's what you want want to create. Um, uh, I think if you were going to read a book, Seth Godin's All Marketers Are Liars is a good is a good book to read. Mm -hmm. um, and but but permission is about saying, hey, you're not crazy, you're brave. So that's a really good thing. You're not crazy, you're brave if blank, right? You're not crazy if you are, you know, cry in the bathroom because your kids are, you know, being a pain in the butt. And then, you know, two hours later, you get on a call and and muster up your, you know, everything you can to be professional on with a client and rock it. You're brave, right? Like it's, it's okay that you're a hot mess as a mom. We all are. Giving that permission makes people know they belong. So it's not just a group about a thing. It's a group about collect, connecting a, a group of people. So that's number one. Number two, create good rules that you protect so that everybody knows it's a safe space. And number three, you don't post so much as of, uh, of teaching and telling them things. You ask questions. The best mm -hmm. engaging questions you can ask if you want to grow your group is to ask. Uh, and you could do this even with a small group of people that you just invite all your friends or people on your list that invite in. You get 50, maybe 100 people in the group to start. And you start asking questions, decision support. Ask them how they want to run the group, right? Ask them to celebrate things together. 
ask them their opinion, right? What's your opinion on what kind of course they watch? Ask them opinion about, we just the other day said, what do you do? Do you use Trello? Do you use Asana? Do you use ClickUp? What do you use? Like when you watch YouTube, what do you, do you do how-to videos things? So we give them ABC choices instead of leaving things open. Don't use polls because polls kill your engagement. You do mm-hmm. the, um, you know, one, two, three, so that the comments are there. And then the people that actually comment more than just the answer, those are your super engagers, start to connect with those people and personally reach out and tell them to post more, right? So you're not trying to get everybody to post more. It's the super engagers to post more. Once you start that process where we always have a decision support question, you know, one week we have a, um, asking people what their opinion is. We ask everybody to celebrate something with us, drop a GIF if you're, you know, to show me blank, those kinds of things. Like, how do you feel about, con- you know, courses? What's the last course you bought? You know, how do you feel about a uh, course, uh, you know, people that are selling courses or online marketers, Thro- drop a GIF or an emoji below, right? If you do those, then Facebook starts thinking you're popular because there's naturally good engagement there. And Facebook will start recommending people to you so that you don't have to invite people in. And now we, uh, you know, several years later have over 50,000 people in the group organically grown with um, 5,000 plus posts a month, uh, over 100, between 100 and 200,000 comments and reactions every single month, over 70% of the uh, women in there engage and 100 people a day, 80% of which are invited to us organically from Facebook coming into our Facebook group. And it's with that system. And the one layer I would recommend you put on top of it is to go get featured. Just go get on podcasts, Go do collaborations like this so other people Mm -hmm. see you and say, go and join the Boss Moms Facebook group or Mm -hmm. whatever group it is. Um, Mm -hmm. And that ecosystem works. I don't hang out in other social media. I don't post on my Facebook page very much. I don't really hang out on Instagram very much. I don't go anywhere. That's my only thing. I'm in the group, ask engaging questions. I let Facebook do its job and I get featured. That's it. Unbelievable. I have to give you a round of applause. (laughs) I did that fast too. I was like, how can you guys? I may be the only person you guys have to slow down when you listen to it. This is calm down. This is calm down. Your your growth has just been absolutely astronomical, and I know that we're running out of time. Uh, and I just want to thank you so much for coming on and sharing your energy and your positivity and your knowledge with us. It's been absolutely amazing. Um, if there was, if you could go back in time, and I know this is a, a kind of a cookie cutter question, but a lot of the people watching this, in fact, most people watching this are just starting out. They're just looking at selling their first course. What is the one thing that is going to trip them up that you would like to just kind of get them get them over? Like what's one piece of advice you could give them to say, hey, don't do this because like, so for example, Sheila Heard, for example, is saying, I have a client trying to build a course for mothers right now and she's convinced herself that she can't announce or pre-sell the course until her website is ready any advice. So what are the, what are the big obstacles that are going to trip people up that they just don't need to worry about? Like the fancy cameras and the fancy microphones and, you know, the, yeah, the, people, the, people you know. buy from people. In fact, I know, I know people who purposely put tech issues in what they do, right. To seem human. Um, there are going to be all sorts of things. You don't, you don't need anything really. All you need is to be able to have a page that somebody could buy something from like mm-hmm. a checkout page. Some people could even do it through Facebook. I you mm-hmm. know, you do it through PayPal. Those the, all mm-hmm. the tech is not necessary. Um, I say what, what you, what you need is to realize what, whatever you're scared of. Um, so Shayla, if you were saying she's scared about announcing or pre-selling until her website is done, then what you do is you do, it's called calling the elephant in the room right? Whatever you're scared about or worried about, like my camera quality or whatever it is, you just, you call it out. So you have her announced into the group. Okay. My website's not done. So I've been nervous about telling you guys about this thing that I'm putting out because I was worried that maybe you wouldn't want it. But then I realized, you know, if you don't know about it, then you really, you really don't know it's there. And then you, then it's not something, you know, you could have. And so I, I, the website's not done. It's not there yet, but you know what it will be. And when it is, you guys, so you're doing a couple things. Number one, you're calling the elephant in the room. Um, my favorite example was a, a, a girl in a workshop who did um, like insurance sales. And she just said, I, somebody told me that I sound like a used salesman. So now I'm really scared to, to sell. And and I've been, and my numbers have been dropping. And I just said, okay, call the elephant in the room. Every time you see somebody come in, you say, look, I had somebody tell me, cause I'm really bubbly. I'm pretty excited. And I had somebody tell me that, um, I'm like a used car salesman. So you know what? If I get too excited, too bubbly for you, just pull on your ear and then we'll both know 
I'll take a deep breath and we'll slow it down a bit. And what it does is it just calls out something that was you probably thought was a problem that probably wasn't because most people don't really give a crap if you have a website, right? Most people, you, you know, I, I, my website views are super low. My sales pages, my videos, yeah. those are those are high views, right? Yeah. So just call the elephant down or whatever it is. And you're creating buzz. You have to tell her that if nobody knows you exist and you come out cold, your conversions will not be more than one, maybe 2% if you have something stellar. If you just start going out and telling people about it, building buzz at, and tell her, just ask the questions like mm. at, don't, don't necessarily tell people about the pre-launch uh, at first, ask them questions about the course that she's making about their need and desire for that problem to be solved and get the conversation going. So you're building awareness for it, build buzz for it. Then tell people in, in, we call it inline mention as you're talking about it, being like, mm. yeah, let's talk about moms trying to balance their time. Okay. You know, I mean, I'm, I'm building this, this program right now. It's not going to be out yet. It's going to be out in a couple of weeks. But while, I, while I'm working on that, I want to talk about time. I want to talk about time management, whatever it is, right? Like I'm doing this thing. It's going to teach you graphic design. It's not done yet. I'm working on it. More to come there. So get excited about it. But I want to talk about graphic design. And here's one or two things we can talk about now. So you can mm -hmm. inline mention without having yeah. some big salesy mm -hmm. pre-launch announcement, yeah, exactly. right? About it leading up to it. And if you, if you do that, if you do the pre-launch, if you do the buzz, if you talk about it with people and get them excited and aware of the problem and really pour lemon on the paper cut that it needs to be solved now, you can convert five to 10%. And, and if you know 500 list at 1% and 500 person list at 10%, very different numbers. <laughs> Very different numbers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome. I'm going to let you go to the movies. I'm super jealous, but I'm also so grateful that you spent some time with us on your deep thought day to do this. This has been absolutely amazing. Uh, thank you so much. Have a great time at the, the movies. And I know that a bunch of people are going to go and check out the Boss Mom uh, Facebook group now and the podcast and the books. Get amongst Dana and whatever she's doing because you, you, it's been just so game changing meeting you and coming into contact with you and having you speak at our events and getting to know you, you really are one of the most strategic thinkers I've come across and I really love hanging out with you. Aww. So thank you so much for your time. Well, and I, I think I'm in, am I in this group? I mean, I'm, I'm around too. So if anybody wants to tag yeah. me or has any questions, just, I mean, not while I'm at the movies, but other than that. Perfect. What are, you, what, are you, what are you going to see? What, I, what don't, I don't know. My friend picked yeah. it out and got the tickets. I'm just coming along. I'm, I'm just going I'm for the popcorn. To see, I'm hanging out to see Top Gun too, man. I'm ah, done. Is that not out yet, is it? Oh, it, was, it was due out in June, and, of course, the pandemic put an mm. end to that. So I'm really, really looking forward to seeing Maverick. <laughs> All right. Um, hey, thank you so much again, Dan and all staff. Uh, have a great time at the movies, and uh, we'll catch you on the flip side. Bye. Thank you. All right, gang. That is the one and only Dana Molstar from Boss Mom. Go check out everything she's doing. Uh, and thank you all again for being a part of this. And again, just a couple of shout outs to some of the people who are having amazing success here. Tina Hughes, uh, last count, uh, this was last night, actually, 41 people already opted in for her course. Uh, Angie Neal has already sold some. Uh, or already sold one uh, copy of her course and has a couple of other people lined up about to convert, which is awesome. Uh, and Yogesh Sharma uh, already had a bunch of people opt in. Uh, and Jay Sant, one of our Mavericks, already had a bunch of people opt in. Jennifer Paganessi says, thanks, always great advice and ideas. Yes, 100%. Uh, Alex Baccarella, I got my first sale. Dude, give us the details in the group. Give us the details in the group. That is fantastic, brother. I'm so happy for you. Uh, Samir Shah has sold one. This is just epic. I love it. I did not expect people to sell their first copy of their course during the challenge. I expected it to happen during the training. Uh, more about that later. See what I just did there? A nice inline mention, courtesy of um, Dan and Stuff's teaching. Uh, but I didn't expect anyone to sell a copy of their course during the challenge. This is amazing. So uh, super, super grateful that you guys are taking action. Remember, we're giving, Amy Hall has 18 opt-ins. Now talking about the elephant in the room, today I got blown out this morning, right? Because, you know, we've got kids and we're working from home and stuff happens, right? Um, and I didn't have time to tee up all my fancy lower thirds and all that kind of stuff. I use a separate piece of software for that. I won't bore you with the details, but I didn't have time to tee that up. So all of my fancy graphics where I tell you to go do this, go do that, leave a comment. None of that happened today because I could, just got caught on the hop and I literally jumped into StreamYard at nine o'clock when I was supposed to go live. Dan was already here waiting for me. I was on a call this morning with our Mavericks Club members. I literally jumped in and... Um, 
got caught on the hop. But I hope this has been super helpful for you anyway, even though I haven't been able to put the polish on it. Nick Cree says, I'm now getting opt-ins from version two. Thanks for saving me a shit ton of time and money. Love it, Nick. Dude, I can't wait till these bloody restrictions are over and we can hang out in real life again, man. Uh, good work. Uh, here we go. Alex, woohoo, UI designed for non-designers. Only one person opted in and he bought after I offered the pre-sale. Fantastic. Uh, so proof of concept. So now we just keep doing it, okay? We just keep doing it again. Uh, okay, okay, and uh, right. So we're giving away an iPad Pro on Friday. You know the deal. You have to be here all week and you have to be here on Friday to accept the prize. Uh, tomorrow, coming up tomorrow, my good friend Dave Foy, who is one of our course creators. By the way, Dana is one of our course creators at WP Elevation. One of the many courses that she's created over the years is the Content Strategy Blueprint, which is available uh, in our online store at wpelevation.com. So go check that out. And Dave Foy tomorrow uh, is also the co-creator of the High Ticket Sales Funnels course that we have uh, over at WP Elevation. Uh, I had a couple of questions about Mavericks too. Before I leave you, a couple of questions about Mavericks. If you uh, so, Mavericks is our our, our high end mastermind for uh, for agencies. If you are if your agency is already doing six figures a year and you want to get to multiple six and seven figures, then go check out. Um, in fact, just leave a comment uh, underneath this uh, this this post here, this video here with the word Maverick and one of our team will be in touch. Otherwise, you can just email support at wpelevation.com. Uh, with the word Maverick and our team will get in touch and let you know how that works. Uh, it's for, as I said, it's for our agencies are already doing six figures and you want to get into multiple six and seven figures. Uh, it's our high-end mastermind program. Uh, it's not for the faint-hearted, but it's awesome. And I was on a call with those guys this morning, which is why I was kind of that and managing kids. I was caught on the hop and just made it in time for this. So loving the conversation. Keep the conversation going. Join us back here tomorrow at the same time to come and hang out with Dave Foy, who has built a very, very nice business out of um, uh, teaching his technical expertise. And you could argue, and I'm going to question him on this tomorrow, how has he done this when a lot of what he teaches can be found on YouTube? How has he packaged this up into online courses and made a very, very nice lifestyle for himself? Uh, so come and check that out tomorrow. And then Friday, I'm going to reveal the entire Course Creators Blueprint, all of the bits and pieces, how the workbooks fit in, how, to, how the lead gen works, how your unique value proposition for your course works, uh, how the delivery of this stuff works. I'm going to map all of that out on Friday and let you know how you can work with us to get this done over the next 12 weeks in the Course Creators Blueprint program, which opens on Friday. So stick around for that. And of course, we're giving away the iPad on Friday as well. All right. Have a great day, everyone. Uh, I hope you're having as much fun as we are. I'll see you again tomorrow with Dave Foy. Same time, same channel. Until then, I'm Troy Dean. Go Elevate.